Welcoming you to another broadcast. At this hour, we have our bilingual um, broadcast, our teaching in English and Spanish. So we ask that you be patient as we translate live on the fly uh, between languages. Esta es la hora que damos la enseñanza en inglés y español. Y pedimos que tengas eh, pues paciencia mientras que traduzcamos eh, de un idioma al otro. Aproveche y aprende el otro idioma. While we're at it, you can learn the other language as, as well. Es un beneficio de sintonizarse con nuestro ministerio. Eh, ministerio. It's a benefit, an added benefit, I should add, uh, of uh, tuning in to our ministry. Okay, God bless you all. Welcome. Dios les bendiga a todos. Bienvenido. Hace, it's about two weeks uh, that I haven't been on this, in the studio, my desk. <laughs> And uh, so things have gotten out of place and whatnot. The volume looks good. So God bless you, and still, there's still room for improvement. Amen. Dios le bendiga a todos. Hace dos semanas que no estoy aquí en el estudio. 
East, Olivia Hanno Norio. We were traveling in New York, Pennsylvania, in Pennsylvania, y también Norte Carolina. We've also went to North Carolina to visit church members and leaders. Visitamos los líderes de la iglesia, miembro. And here's my peanuts here. So we've been away from our studio, so forgive anything that's in the way, like those peanuts there and whatnot. Dios le bendiga. Vamos a comenzar hoy. Seguimos hacia adelante hoy en el estudio de Los Santos. We're continuing in our holy series. Oh, this is getting very interesting here. So today, we're going to see some more finagling with the word holy as it relates to being separate. You're going to see that today. Very important. Nosotros vamos a ver hoy uh, más, eh, como se dice en inglés, finagling, que es decir que, oh, están jugando con eso, con, jugando con algunas cosas, sí. Y cómo se usa la palabra santo. Y hay un ejemplo en la enseñanza de hoy de separado. So, vamos a ver qué tiene que ver los santos con los separados. So, we'll see it today. So, there's no doubt in this, folks. This is like, it's one of those things that really bring, the, bring it home. Today is very conclusive. So, we're going to see that today. Uh, so, vamos a entrar. Let's get into the Word of God. Uh, join me. We're in Leviticus. And today we're going to start at Leviticus 21, 22. Hoy vamos a comenzar en Levítico, capítulo 21, 22. Y alguno que esté nuevo con nosotros, viendo esto por primera vez, sépase que ya tenemos más de 80 horas de estudio en este tema. Y si escucha algo que no, usted dice, ¿de dónde sacaste eso?, 80 horas atrás. Ya hemos invertido 80 horas y esta solamente es su primera hora oyendo esto. So, darte el, el privilegio y, darte, y, y regálate entendimiento con oír las primeras horas que ya han pasado. So, before you make judgment, some of you may be watching these teachings like for the first time. Realize that we're 80 hours plus into this teaching. We started all the way back there in uh, actually in Exodus. And you really need to, you know, before you say, where did you get that? Where did this guy come out with that? You really need to go back there and see where this guy got that from, okay? So don't make any judgments. Listen to today's lesson. Look for my earliest stuff. Uh, go back all the way to, you see a holy series and you see Exodus. That's where you want to go and start listening and seeing where we got this stuff from. Okay, so it's there. It's in the Bible. All right, so today we're going to continue. Leviticus 21, 22. Let's get into it. And here we go. And the word of God says, He shall eat the bread of his God both of the most holy and of the holy. Now, we've already studied this. What, what is the most holy? In other words, what is the, how, what, how is it read in the Hebrew? What is the most holy? Ya hemos uh, estudiado sobre este término de eh, lo santísimo. I'm sure that's the way it's translated here. Let's, uh, let's just make sure that's what it is. Uh, vamos a comprobar que en el español es santísimo. Sí es. Comerá el pan de su Dios tanto del santísimo como del santo. Okay, so we've already studied. The, and you should give yourself a test. How does it... <coughs> how does it read in the Hebrew for the most holy? Usted debe probarte a ver si recuerdas... ¿Cómo debe el hebreo leer eh, para decir santísimo? Okay, so we'll go. This is uh, Leviticus 21 uh, and 22. So vamos a ir a Levítico 21. 
y 22 right and we'll take a quick look see vamos a ver lo que dice ok lehem lehem right? like you have beth right beth lehem is the house of bread uh, beth en uh, hebreo eh, quiere decir es una figura de una casa también representa eh, la letra B en el alfabet, right? A, B. But it is also the symbol of a house. So it actually is used for a house. In the Hebrew, lechem, which is a bread. Okay. So that's why you see that there. So you see, it's not that hard to learn some Hebrew. Some Hebrew, you don't have to learn all the Hebrew. But you can learn, you can pick a few things up here and there. Okay, this is why I take the time to do this, so you guys can not be afraid of the Hebrew. Eh, paso tiempo enseñándole, como es aquí, el lejem de Belén. En español es Belén, ¿ve? En inglés es Bethlehem, que está aquí, usted lo ve aquí, lejem, que es pan. Y entonces el B, de, en español, que usted lo tiene en B, es es una figura de una casa en la letra de hebreo, ¿ve? Entonces, por eso se llama la casa, casa de pan, porque eh, eso es lo que representa, y el lajem eh, quiere decir pan. All right, entonces hago estas cosas para que ustedes no tengan temor del hebreo, que ustedes, you know, le estudian, nosotros estamos estudiando, que aprenden también, también hago igual con el griego en el Nuevo Testamento, ahora tenemos esta oportunidad en el Antiguo Testamento de aprender o consolidar nuestra exposición eh, al hebreo por los tiempos, hemos, eh, siempre hemos oído en inglés Bethlehem, Bethlehem, ahora pues entiende qué quiere decir, ok? Um, all right, so, and aquí el, el, el pan, lechem, elohim, right, elohim, eh, que es el pan de...
Mira, esa es la mejor. Pero solo estoy diciendo que nosotros tenemos que ser educados. Uh, all I'm saying, we're not dishing the King James Version, but we have to get educated, folks. You just can't say the King James Version, like they say, divinely inspired. You know, and they're trying to give it the weight or the authority over the Hebrew. Come on. Así que están tratando de darle autoridad sobre el hebreo. And again, it is an insistence on dumbing people down. Especially when it comes to the truth of scripture. Esto es otro esfuerzo de hacer la gente ignorante eh, a, a, a la opresión. De las verdades que están en la Biblia que Dios puso en su palabra y que está todavía en el hebreo de, por su mayoría escrita. No que los hebreos lo explican uh, como se debe, pero está escrito y hay muchas pruebas que lo que está escrito no es lo que los hebreos enseñan. So, tenemos eso, esa prueba, esa evidencia. So, It's not to say that the Hebrew version of the scripture is uh, the Hebrew version, meaning not the written scripture, but the way they teach it. I'm not saying that the way the Hebrews teach it is the right way either, because we do find, we do find differences in what the uh, Jewish or the Hebrew this and that are teaching with what the Hebrew actually says. So we still do see that inconsistency even in Hebrew, in, in the, uh, not in the Hebrew, but in the teachings of the Hebrew um, scriptures by those who uh, uphold the Hebrew scriptures as authoritative. Then you don't accept Elohim for what it says, or Echad, for what it implies, and other things such as that, and especially uh, also, um, yeah, well, we, we find those differences, so we'll leave it at that. Nosotros encontramos esas diferencias eh, eh, en la manera que los hebreos esto y otro eh, usan o interpretan el hebreo de su propio uh, libro o lenguaje autoritativo. So, eso indica que está bien, porque ellos está, tienen problemas con lo que dice la escritura en hebreo. So, to me, that's a good indication because uh, they still, Hebrews this and that, and, pro, and the Jews also, find some difficulty with the way the Hebrew is written. And that's a good thing. See, that, that gives me, um, it helps me to, uh, you know, to believe that the Hebrew, the written Hebrew is uh, as close as you're going to get to the original utterance of God because it disagrees with what the Jews are saying. It disagrees with what the uh, Hebrew this and that are, uh, you know, insisting that it says. You know, you have to make excuses for Elohim and Echad. You know, and all of them have to do that uh, to a great degree. So that's good. That's a good thing. Um, all right, so this is what we have to understand. So you have to get, gra get a good grasp on the environment, the biblical environment in which we are now in. Uh, we are coming out of dark ages, really. Not, and we're not talking about the Roman Catholic or the Middle Ages, dark ages. We're talking about the biblical dark ages. And, and the dark ages started when God started talking because man didn't get it. So we've been in the dark, man has, for a long time. It is only, only now that... Uh, we have major light. We're in the light after Christ came that there is major light. The day has come that things are becoming clearer and clearer and clearer. It's not the clearest, you know, but we're, we're pretty much 
you know, I uncovering things, especially now with the the Kodesh that we're doing here. It's pretty much a done deal at this point because when you understand what holy actually means, the whole Bible starts to open up. I mean, there's very, very little left for you or anyone to really understand Scripture the right way, and you know, after you have Kodesh resolved. Así que después que... Ahora que en estos días, porque la gente y la religión ha estado en la oscuridad en relación a lo que, la, lo que Dios está enseñando en su palabra, uh, por muchos años, desde el comienzo que Dios está hablando, eh, la ignorancia ha sido bastante sustancial. Ahora tenemos, estamos en la luz del día. Después que Cristo vino, pues ya se manifestó. Se, ya las sombras se fueron y hay sol, se levantó el sol. Y estamos en el día, y en pleno día, hoy día, en, en pleno día. Y ya se está, como decía, ya estamos en la tarde. Ok, so ya ahora se ve claro, se entiende más claro las cosas. Y entonces ahora nosotros enseñando sobre lo santo, ¿qué quiere decir? San? Son cosas que estaban todavía en la oscuridad, que se había ingerido, se dice, o eh, se, se había eh, heredado, o fue, her, 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 fue heredado de lo hebreo, right? Los cristianos dicen santo como los hebreos dicen santo, eso santo no lo toca, pero eso porque los hebreos lo decían, que eso es lo que quería decir. Ahora estamos viendo que no, eso no es lo que quiere decir. Estamos viendo la realidad más claro. Y ahora se está abriendo, ya con esto, se destruye la falsa religión y la falsa.
May. May. Fourth entry. May. May. Okay, the first one was, let's try it again. Storms H4480. Men. Men. Okay, that's the one we'll stick with. So it's men, men, as you see it written in the English. Esa palabra tiene cuatro versiones de cómo pronunciarlo. Nosotros solo vamos a usar la primera, no vamos a aprender todas. Pero de todos modos, eh, min eh, quiere decir y. ¿Sí? Y. O algo en adicional. O lo que está también alrededor, o sea, del grupo. Eh, ok, so, this is something that's added from the other things. So, when it says the Kodesh, Kodesh, and the Kodesh, right? And Kodesh. Así que dice, Kodesh, Kodesh, mean, y, y, y lo Kodesh, lo, lo regular, lo otro. So this is the way uh, they, they translate it and simply you see the use of Kodesh, Kodesh, and Kodesh. And say, so if it means separate, I keep emphasizing this because <laughs> if it means separate, so you know, he gets to eat of the bread that's, that's separate and separate or separately separate and separate, you know. So the thing is that it gets silly. I mean, you, you know, you guys. <laughs> si, si esto es separado, el Kodesh que es si separado. Pero entonces se pone esto ridículo. Porque entonces Dios decía del pan separado, separado. Y, y también del separado. You know, it's like a crazy way of talking. Es como una manera loca de hablar. Y eso es lo que estamos, estamos diciendo, estamos haciendo que, que la palabra se vea como locura. Cuando en realidad no es, no hay nada loco aquí. Y no solo porque lo digo. You know, we're making the word of God look silly. And God look, you know, what's wrong with you, God? I mean, <laughs> you know, how many separate, separates and separates are there going to be? And I'm surprised simply that there isn't a, a, a third separate. Where's the third separate? Because usually God has a third third of, of special things. You know? He's always like in groups of three for some odd reason. Odd reason. <laughs> it occurs in groups of three. But yet, there's no Kodesh, Kodesh, Kodesh. And Kodesh, Kodesh. Mean Kodesh. You know, let's go to three, two, one. Why isn't there that? Why not, right? Uh, so, ¿por qué no, entonces no hay los tres? Casi siempre Dios tiene como tres de estos, tres de oh, otros. El, el número tres tiene mucho que ver con Dios. ¿Por qué no hay tres Kodesh así juntos? No, Kodesh, Kodesh, Kodesh. Min Kodesh, Kodesh. Min Kodesh, right? <coughs> The three Kodeshes, and then the two Kodeshes, and then the one Kodesh. Why isn't there that? You know, it's like an inconsistency uh, in in that craziness. If you're going to have it, then where's the three, at least? You know, then you can, you know, yeah. But it doesn't make any sense. No tiene sentido. Right? Uh, usando separado como la definición Using separate as the definition For this word It it's just really makes no sense It's actually Nonsensical No tiene sentido no, It's not that God See the problem is that you guys are misunderstanding something I'm not saying that God spoke Nonsensically Yo no estoy diciendo aquí que Dios habló Sin sentido el que no tiene sentido son los que dicen que Kodesh quiere decir separado. You know, the ones who are, are, are not, um, are not uh, making sense or are nonsensical are those who say that Kodesh means separate. 
You're the, you're the guys who are nonsensical, not God. It's simply God isn't saying that. And that's what you guys have to understand. That's why it appears nonsensical, because God isn't saying that. <laughs> that that nonsense that you, you know that it sounds like nonsense, that's not what God is saying. It means that you got you got it wrong. That's what it means. Lo que quiere decir que lo tiene mal. La definición que están usando está mal. That's what that means. Now, when you when you have the right understanding, we've already covered 80 hours ago, you realize that God is speaking about, about teaching. The teachings. That this is the, the, this is the bread has significance. That's why you're doing this. So the, the most holy bread the, is actually a, a bread that has double teachings to it. It's, it's, it's applicative in double dimensions, if you will. Of course, we're not talking about dimensions. But in, in different ways, in two different applications at the same time. That's the uh, Kodesh, Kodesh. And then you have the Kodesh. The regular teaching that's normally a teaching. And, and you got to understand, it's putting another level. On the teaching in any case. <laughs> it's putting a, another level onto the teaching at any rate. Just the fact that the most holy. Because even when you say holy, it's already not the profane. The profane itself has its, its state of being, its nature. Lo profano tiene su naturaleza. <laughs> Tiene su propósito. It has its purpose. You got to understand that. Now, we have to look at what what do Jews or Hebrews, this and that, uh, want to mean by the natural. Because they they want you and want everyone and they themselves uh, uh, force the reading of Scripture to be in a natural sense. Ellos forzan que la Escritura sea... Eh, leída y entendida en su forma natural No espiritual, no en algo más adicional Sino en su forma natural so, Ellos quieren que se haga, que se entienda la Biblia en lo natural No hay otro medio o No hay otro estado Ok so there isn't an, another way, you know, the Jews, the Hebrew this and that want, uh, say that the scripture has to be read or understood in the natural sense. So there's really no other way to see it naturally, right? There's no sub subcategory to the natural way. No hay una categoría menos que la categoría natural. So when we're taking it in the, in the natural, that's like the basement, right? That's the, that's the first level. Straightforward. So cuando se está leyendo la escritura naturalmente, entonces es, ese es la, el primer nivel, la, la única consideración que dicen los judíos que se debe de tener. All right, so no hay un, una categoría menos o subcategoría. Eso es planamente simple, no hay que añadirle más. So you have to understand that at the basic level, that is that, that level. So when something is holy, it is a step above. So how many steps do you have? Lo natural, ¿cuántos, cuántos pasos tiene? Niveles. Si algo es Kodesh. Ya el Kodesh dejó de ser natural. <laughs> so, you know, the holy has ceased from being natural. This is the problem that the Jews have with, and that's not a, a condemnation. Don't ever take anything. The Jews are my friends. I love the Jew. Amen. And I love Hebrew, this and that. It's all of y'all. I love the idea. I love it. We're all Israel. I just love the idea. The concept is beautiful. Okay, so I'm not against y'all in that. I'm just saying that you, I, I have not seen evidence 
uh, that is uh, that is like from God. Now, I see a lot of people making statements and and bringing things in and trying to tie the knot. But I don't see what I don't see is God doing that. See, God could have easily done things to make it simple, and he didn't. So that's a problem right there. But you guys aren't looking for that. You're looking for reasons to believe in what you believe in. So this is a problem. There's also another problem there. So it's a problem that the Hebrew, this and the other, because they look for reasons to support their beliefs, but God did not provide clara indicación, right? No lo, no lo probé yo, porque si eran claros, yo tuviera yo hebreo, esto y otro. You know, if it was clear evidence, I would be a Hebrew, this or that. I just don't see it. Everybody said, oh, this, this, look at this, look at this. I said, listen, every religion in the history of mankind always had this and this and this and this and this. Right? But they don't have facts. <laughs> but lo que no tiene es los datos. Uh, prove, proven. And that's what's missing. Pro, eh, la cosa probada. Y eso no lo... Y que Dios lo puede hacer. You see, the problem here is that you're not talking about human religion, man. Come on. No estamos hablando aquí de religión humana. Estamos hablando de Dios que creó los cielos y la tierra. We're talking about the God who created the heavens and the earth. DNA, baby. DNA. ADN. ADN. Esto es sencillo. El Dios que hizo los cielos y la tierra solo tenía que preservar ADN de Israel en la tierra prometida en el desierto en el camino come on the ADN ADN eso es Dios proveyendo porque a Dios le interesa que se sepa esto y que se vuelven a a su tierra no hay ese es el problema es, esto es sencillo. Yo quisiera. Yo quisiera. Pero Dios proveyó la manera de ser salvo. Fe. No por vista, no por ADN. Por la fe. En Cristo Jesús. En Yeshua a Mashiach. En eso es la fe que hay que tener. Punto. O ADN. Pero sin el ADN, yo no veo cómo la gente está brincando para allá. No, no entiendo ese pensamiento, es falta de pensamiento. So I see a lot of people jumping over the fence without a DNA, evidence, that God would have provided if that's what God wanted. Or no, he gave you only one way of faith. So it's dumb to drop your faith in Jesus Christ for whatever dumb reason these guys give you oh because that's a, a Greek name or a Roman name this is ridiculous you know you guys are just <laughs> it's listen it's the heart that's the only thing God listens to is your heart not this Dios oye el corazón no esto corazón get it straight doesn't matter the language, the language doesn't matter. What matters is your heart. Who are you talking to? God knows. Dios conoce. Too bad that the Hebrew this and I don't know it. But God knows. Dios conoce. And, you, and you're falling for the trick to make you um, drop your faith in Jesus Christ. Because some story here. Here, this book. That book. This is what's going on. You guys, uh, you guys need some help. Necesitan una ayuda. You don't like the truth when you, you're told the truth. That's the other problem that shows you that you're full of it. You don't have the truth. If you had the truth, you would sit here and listen. Because I'm speaking truth. Yo estoy hablando verdad. Si, si ustedes tenían o tendrán verdad o aman la verdad, ustedes lo escucharían. Pero no, les molesta lo que digo. Porque es la verdad. So you don't go dropping your faith in Jesus Christ over these stories. 
God provides DNA evidence, you know what? I'm going to beat you on the line. Si Dios provee el ADN, tú sabes qué? Yo te voy a, yo voy a estar adelante, a frente suyo en la línea. No hay problema. Pero sin eso, está dejando su fe. You are, you are dropping your faith. Y así mismo como deja eso, ¿para qué? ¿Para adoptar otra fe? <ríe> so tú estás dejando fe que tenía todo plenamente. ¿Para qué? ¿Hacer otro acto de fe? Yo ni creo su primer fe, ni esta segunda. So I don't believe your first faith or the second one because it's just as weighty as the first one you did. La segunda fe que tiene ahora es la, tiene el mismo peso que el primero. And you, we know what you did with that one. Y sabemos lo que tú hiciste con esa primera. Yeah, so es más claro que él no canta el gallo. So more clear than that, the, uh, the rooster does not sing, baby. Does not sing more clearer than that. Alrighty. So, <clears throat> so clearly, when this is, is interpreted the wrong way, it's taken the wrong way, you get the silly stuff. It's, again, it's just all the same argument. Silliness seems to be what people want to hear and what people accept. Like, lo, lo, lo falso es como lo que la gente se atrae con lo falso y lo que le gusta oír. Pero la verdad no le gusta oír. Truth they don't want to hear. Truth hurts. La, la verdad duele. ¿Sí? So, this is clear that, you know, if you take it as, uh, as you guys have it, uh, this is just silly talking. But if you take it as we have discovered this to mean, then this is serious business here. This is a very serious and concise statement. Si lo toman como separado, esto viene siendo es ridículo. Si lo toman de la manera que hemos descubierto que significa coder, esto es algo bien serio y, y gravoso. All right? Especialmente en el contexto en que se está dando este, este punto. So, the, especially, this is very serious within the context of what what is happening here so if you don't know what's happening here which most of you won't let us see what is going on here vamos a ver lo que está diciendo Dios aquí now again I don't want to go into these teachings within the context because I'm going to be doing these one at a time when we get out of the Holy Series and we go back into our scripture readings and teachings nosotros vamos a volver a estas cosas cuando estoy dando la enseñanza a través de la Biblia, ¿ves? Eh, en nuestra enseñanza fuera del serie de los santos. Pero vamos a ver que el, el contexto para entender un poco mejor el uso de la palabra Codet. So what we're seeing here is that God is telling uh, Moses, says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, ¿sí? Speak unto Aaron, 21.17, 21.17, Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed. That's Aaron, right? Aaron. So, these are priests, right? They're from the priestly line. Estos son hijos del sacerdote, son eh, del sacerdocio. Son de la línea del sacerdocio. Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations that hath any blemish. Entonces, so que tiene algún defecto. Uh, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. No puede él ofrecer el pan de su... O sea, oficial. He goes on. Eh, si, a, a, aun si está... Eh, tiene doblado la espalda. O es un enano. <laughs> no puede ofrecer la, el pan. Aquí, and over here, you know, you see a, a crook back, which is the hunchback of Notre Dame, or a dwarf. So even, and whose fault was it that he's a dwarf? You see that? <laughs> ¿Y quién le hizo este hombre un enano? ¿Usted está entendiendo? 
Because, you see, you don't understand. You know, God is keeping this guy from offering something. He did it. God is the one that allowed him to be a, a, um, a at least, at being a dwarf. That's not something that he did. But he, he's a dwarf. Something that was determined by the genes. So here we got a dwarf here. But because he's a dwarf, because he was born that way, he cannot offer the bread to God. He cannot be the one to offer, to officiate. Él no puede ser el que ofrece. ¿Por qué no? Why can't he? As long as he maintains the things holy, he maintains the sanctity of the things. Why can't he? Why, why does it make any sense? <laughs> ¿Dónde tiene sentido que este enano no puede ofrecer las cosas de Dios? Si, si las cosas son santas y él se mantiene consagrado y él mantenga la consagración, los santos de las cosas y, y del templo, del tabernáculo en este caso, pues ¿por qué no puede ofrecer el pan? ¿Por qué no puede el oficial? So why can't he if, if the thing is separate? And God made him a dwarf. Y Dios le hizo un enano. See, it doesn't fit. Separate doesn't fit. Simple as that. <laughs> en la definición de separado, lo santo es separado, o algo místico, no cabe. No es correcto, period. Porque no tiene sentido. Si lo santo es enseñanza, ah. <laughs> so if holy means that The, is teaching so that the his figure is a teaching now it makes sense see that makes sense because he has to be without blemish because blemish is a, is a reflection of imperfection and imperfection is a result of sin that's right So, la imperfección, el, el, lo daño que tienen esto, estos, estos ejemplos, viene de la imperfección. Y la imperfección es resultado del pecado. Ahora se entiende. ¿Ve? No es separado. Es porque no es la enseñanza que Dios quiere. Es, Dios está haciendo modelos, ejemplos. God is creating examples, um, models. Okay, that's what he's doing. Demonstrations in, in the acts, in los actos, los ritos, in the rituals. These are demonstrative teachings. Um, los, los ritos son actos demonstrativo de enseñanza o sea enseñanza en forma de demostración representativos ahora tiene sentido porque el sacerdote tiene que representar la perfección you, you know the, uh, the priests especially when they're officiating ¿por qué? porque en, en particular en la oficia o la oficiación. ¿Por qué tiene que ser perfecto? Porque está modelando a Jesucristo que viene en perfección. Es que se the model in Jesus Christ that's going to come in perfection. So we have to understand that it isn't, God knows this, this, this guy was born to be a dwarf. He knows that. That's the result of, this, of the sin of man, imperfection. Eh, Dios sabe que este hombre iba a ser enano. Porque ese es el resultado de la imperfec imperfección del pecado. Dios lo sabe. Right? It's just simply, it's not the teaching that God wants to bring. Because again, God is teaching against the imperfection of man. See, so that's the battle there. 
So, la lucha de Dios es enseñando la, la enseñanza contra la imperfección del hombre que viene del, del pecado. Por eso Dios tiene esas reglas. Porque la tendencia o la, el estado primordial del hombre ahora, después del pecado, es pecado. Es imperfección. So what we see is that God is fighting against the default of man, which is sin and imperfection. So yeah, even in the priestly line, there's going to be imperfection. And God is telling you right off the bat, when one of your priests have this imperfection, they just cannot, they cannot perform the teachings, perform the rituals, because that imperfection is not part of the picture. That's all. There's nothing else involved here. It's just simply that's not the picture God wants to have. And it proves that God is painting a picture. That's what this proves. Dios está enseñando aquí claramente que Él está haciendo un escenario. Eso es lo que prueba esto. Es un escenario. Y ese enano no cabe en ese escenario. No es parte de la enseñanza que Dios quiere. No es nada en contra de, del sacerdote. It's nothing against this, this, this priest. It's that the, the teaching of God cannot be had with it. That's it. Es solamente que la enseñanza de Dios no puede ser dado con él en esta condición. That's it. La condición es humana. Y eso es lo que es por el pecado de Adam. His condition is what it is because of Adam's sin. Period. That's another thing. See, the Hebrew, the Hebrew this and that, and the Jew particularly, because that's the first one that did it, is not understanding this. This is because of Adam's sin. It's not extirpated. It's not taken away. He doesn't lose his, priest, his priesthood because of it, but he, he loses his, uh, his chance to officiate here Because he's not fit for the teaching that's involved. This is not an issue of ritual. Esto no es un, una sencilla acto de rito. Porque eso no es lo que lo santo es. <laughs> Because that's not what holy is about. Holy isn't about ritual. It involves ritual. But it's not about ritual. It's about teaching. Eh, lo santo es de enseñanza, no es de rito. Because if it's just about ritual, then there's no problem with this guy offers, offering the bread and officiating. Entonces no tuviera problema con este varón sacerdote de ofrecer el pan. Y de oficial delante de Jehová su Dios. Pero el asunto es la enseñanza, el modelo. Eso es lo que Dios no quiere. Ese es el problema. ¿Sí? So the problem is the visual. The visual. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Ay, santo. Listen, we got to go back to kindergarten. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Como decimos en kindergarten. Porque eso es lo que Dios está haciendo. Because this is what God is doing. It's the visuals, ladies and gentlemen. Es lo visual, la enseñanza visual. And that's why all of these things had to be done. Y por eso todas estas cositas tenían que ser hechas. Right? No porque Dios es, es así, así. Porque no, esto es lo santo. Es lo santo. Pero no la manera que ustedes lo están interpretando. Es lo santo porque es enseñanza. Tiene que ser perfecto la enseñanza. The visuals. The practices. La, la, lo visual y lo praxis. Lo práctico. Tío, lo practical. La acción. Tiene que ser perfecto. Porque eso es lo que enseña. Ahí es donde está la enseñanza. Uh, again, and it's not what is the teaching so that they, they do what he does? No. 
¿Y qué es la enseñanza? ¿Que ellos hagan lo que está haciendo el sacerdote? No. Es lo significado. Los lo que están perdidos. Because what would the people do normally here? ¿Qué es lo que están haciendo los judíos aquí? Mirando y esperando la expiación, la ofrenda. They're waiting for the expiation and the offering. And in fact, a lot of this stuff wasn't even seen by the, the people. Todas muchas de estas cosas no eran vistos por la gente, por el pueblo. Era para el sacerdote aprender de esto, lo que quiere decir, lo el like, significado. But again, they didn't realize that. <laughs> Porque hay que, hay que leerlo naturalmente, you see? So, we, you know, the, it was only the priest that was be seeing all of this and had to understand what and why God was asking them to do this. No one's looking. <laughs> you see? So, again, no one's seeing this dwarf offering. Why is it so important? Because the priests were supposed to learn. These are teachings for the priests first. Estas son enseñanzas para el sacerdote primeramente. And so the priest was supposed to learn from what he's doing. Para enseñar el pueblo. To be able to then teach the people, you know, with the, with the understanding that would come about by doing things in this manner. It's the same that we do when we're trying to teach something to a kid, for example. Es lo mismo que sucede que cuando estamos tratando de enseñar a un muchacho algo y usamos algo que nosotros hicimos, ¿ve? o quizás que el muchacho nos vio hacer. So we use something that maybe that we've done before or that the child saw us doing. You say like, remember when I was, when we were planting the plants the other day? Recuerda que estamos sembrando en la finca el otro día, o el jardín, y, y primero se, se preparó la, la tierra primeramente para dar más chance, eh, dar un ambiente mejor, ¿viste? So... We tell the child, let's say, uh, we were gardening the other day. I have a, a garden space out back on the many acres that we have here. And I tell you, remember when we were digging and then we were putting in some good soil and, and putting in and, and cutting some other plants that we don't need and putting thou, those bits and pieces in there so that they can decompose and can feed because all that thing feeds the new thing that we're planting in there gives it ability to sustain itself and makes the soil more healthier and better see that so we're able to explain something but through things that we have done and now we can tell the same thing about the, to the child about their own life this is why we have this home for you that we've prepared this environment so that you can be nurtured. We have books in, in, in the shelves. This is the nutrition for you so that you can grow up healthier. See how I, I, I learned from doing something has to be done when we plant this and that, X, Y, Z. And now I apply the same idea, concept to this child and their life. See, sí, that's what's supposed to happen. Está supuesto suceder que cuando yo hago cosas y, y yo aprendo, mira, como yo abono esta tierra para preparar para esa semillita, por, por eso es renuevo que voy a poner. Y así mismo por el niño, eh, el, el padre tiene que preparar las cosas, eh, tener libros, tener cosas que enriquecen. La mente, la vida, el ambiente de, de los criaturas, de los, de los pequeñitos, los niños. Viste que es lo igual de lo que yo estoy haciendo por oficio por, o, o un placer que tengo de crecer cosas. Pero puedo aplicar eso a otro eh, caso. 
¿Qué es lo que Dios está haciendo aquí en la Biblia? What is God doing here in the Bible? Giving them all these things that have to be done. <coughs> Telling you to do this, do that, etc. What do you think is supposed to happen? It's like everyone forgets or ignores what in fact is happening and will happen and should happen. Eh, parece que la gente se olvida de lo que se debe suceder y lo que va a suceder o debe de suceder, ¿no? Lo, lo que está supuesto suceder. Está supuesto aprender de esas cosas. Eso es lo que yo hago. Yo es sacerdote, yo hago eso. Pero usted no es sacerdote, pero tú puedes aprender de lo que yo hago. ¿Sí? You, you're not a priest. These are things that I do as a priest, but you're not a priest. But these are things that you should learn about because they teach you things about your life, about what you need to be doing, about things that would be good for you. Oh, without blemish. We have to come to God without blemish. This is, and, and the fact is that, hey, he's a dwarf. He was born that way because we're all born into sin. We're all born because of Adam's sin. We all are sinners. We come short of the glory of God. Venimos enano a la gloria de Dios. Es la enseñanza. So no podemos. Solo un, un sacerdote perfecto puede ofrecer delante de Dios. Vendrá uno que pueda ofrecer para todos nosotros. So, so, so someone's coming, a priest, that will be able to offer in our, all of our steads. That's what they need to be learning from this. Because that's what God is teaching because it's the holy thing. Okay. So let's continue looking. You're going to see. It's, this is very clear. Vamos a ver. Okay. Esto es bien claro. So here we go. Uh, and also here, I should save this for that. Anyway, it says there... Uh, Let's just read that. He has a crooked back. He's a dwarf. Or that he had a blemish in his eye. Or be scurvy. Or scabbed. Or have his stones broken. <laughs> I love it. Vamos a leerlo en español. I don't... Does this do that? Yes, it does. Very good. O jorobado. O enano. O que tuviera llaga en el ojo, o sana, o costra, o tuviera quebrantado su pedrecillas. <laughs> y esto es lo que me gusta de las traducciones. Porque, ¿qué son pedrecillas? I mean, do you have uh, pedrecillas? ¿Tú tienes pedrecillas? <laughs> Who has stones? This is not gallbladder stones, gallstones, or kidney stones. These are another stone that the priest would have. Because the priest would have these stones with them. Los sacerdotes tuvieran este tipo de piedra. ¿Qué son las pedrecillas que tiene todo sacerdote? See? Now everybody's thinking about stones. The, the fact is that esto no son piedra. Estas son testículos. <laughs> So they're not stones, they are testicles. So therefore his, te his testicles cannot be broken. In other words, this has to be a perfect specimen, okay, of manhood <laughs> and, uh, you know, being a man and being a human being. That's it. Esto tiene que ser, el sacerdote tiene que ser alguien perfecto en forma. Right? Because again, representando la perfección de Adán, el Adán original que fue hecho perdida. The first Adam was made perfect. The second Adam was perfect as well. So, and that was the priest. The, that's what the priests are all a figure of. Todos los sacerdotes son figuras de Cristo, de Jesucristo. Que viene perfecto, sin mancha. So he will be born without the sin of Adam. That's, that's what that's saying. Esto está diciendo que será nacido sin el pecado de Adán. 
That's the only way that can happen. So it's a must. Así que tiene que ser eh, nacido sin el pecado de Adán. All right. And then it says, He shall eat the bread of his God. Both the holy, of the most holy, and of the holy. So he shall eat. So no se, no se de estar li, eh, uh, eliminando de él comer. So he's allowed to eat to benefit from, again, he's not being taken out of being a, a priest here, because that's what that means. Who is the only one that can eat of this bread? It's only the priest. So solamente los sacerdotes pueden comer este pan. Pero él, Dios, está, Dios no lo está eliminando del sacerdocio. Solo lo está eliminando del el, el modelo del el que sacrifica. Eso es lo que está haciendo. So God is only limiting him from the officiation here. Um, not from his, his, his birthright as a priest. So he's not removing his priest, priesthood. It's only that he can't perform this because he's not teaching it. He's not being, he's not holy when he does it. And therefore he profanes the whole, the whole picture. That's what happens here. Lo que Dios no quiere que se profana el, el escenario, el ejemplo, el, rit, el rito con ese mal ejemplo de un sacerdote, porque el sacerdote está supuesto representar a Cristo tiene que ser perfecto no tener estos eh, estos problemas ahora Dios no lo está quitando del sacerdocio God is not taking him out of the, the priesthood how is that a teaching though is that a teaching do you think usted piensa que eso es una enseñanza en sí que aunque no puede oficiar este sacerdote todavía come del pan del, del del el, el pan santísimo y también del lo santo <laughs> yes yes it is amen praise God porque recuerde que Dios dijo que todo el pueblo será un reino de sacerdote <laughs> you see that so remember God had promised that all the king that all the nation would be a kingdom of priests, every single one, and you know, you know, midgets, dwarfs, tall guys, you know, fat guys, skinny guys, don't matter, crooked backs, you know, broken handed, they all going to be priests, todos iban a ser sacerdotes con todos los defectos, porque, porque recuerde, esto es solamente el, el ejemplo, See? So again, the issue here is that this this specific regulation has to do with the example that God is making with these rituals. This is proves to you that the rituals had a uh, teaching at its core. That's its purpose. This is the proof right here. We can go home after this. Ya podemos irnos a casa después de esto. Esto es la prueba que los ritos, todos los reglamentos, era para una enseñanza. Y no afectaba el hecho que este hombre era sacerdote. Y que Dios dijo que todo el pueblo iba a ser sacerdote. ¿Sí? This is what you got. You have to understand what's happening here. <laughs> oh, anyone was going to be a priest in Israel. So this guy was not going to be removed from his priesthood. Dios no le está quitando de su sacerdocio porque la realidad es que todos son manchadas that's the truth you know what the truth is here in this issue they're all blemished this is just talking about physical blemishes but the physical blemish represents the spiritual blemish that all of the priests had and all of Israel had and everyone in the world has that's the fact. <laughs> so God letting him still be a priest is telling you 
<laughs> it's telling you the fact. You're all of this way. So I'm not going to take him out and leave you all in there. Because you guys are just teaching. You guys are just demonstrating a teaching. See? The fact is that we all have blemishes. El hecho de que todos estamos dañados. Todos tenemos el, 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 el efecto de pecado. Aún los perfectos de, 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 de cuerpo. Todos tenemos imperfección. Todos somos imperfectos. The priests weren't, in per, weren't perfect. They were just perfect in body. The ones officiating. There were many priests that could not officiate. But they were still priests. But they could not officiate because they did not, they did not meet with the standard required to bring the teaching, which is what God is fostering here, teaching in contradiction to the reality of man. But this priest who's a dwarf, and again, I'm just using the dwarf as just one of the examples, broken hand, broken testicles, you know, stones, hey. So, whatever the blemish is, it disqualified them from officiating, but did not take them out of being a priest, because after all, all of Israel was going to be priests. You see, and those who are in Christ are all priests. Guess why? Because we all have to teach. <laughs> we all need, need to learn, and then we teach other... This is what it's all about, folks. It's just all, we're doing what Israel was supposed to do, which is teach. I'm doing now what Israel was supposed to be, had been doing. Enseñando. Israel está supuesto to enseñar. You know, you guys have it all wrong. You know, yeah, Israel is around. Sure, we're teaching. Estamos enseñando. We're not going backwards, we're going forward. Nosotros siempre... Israel estaba en el mundo y Israel está enseñando hoy. Enseña. Eso es lo que debemos estar haciendo. You guys are still learning over there? That is not uh, what you're supposed to be. Eso no es lo que tú estás supuesto estar haciendo. Porque todo esto lo, lo, Dios me lo ha enseñado. All of these things God has taught me. Como dice Jeremías 31 y 32 y 30, oh, 33 y 34, no 32, eso es para los judíos. <ríe> sí, los que quieren seguir el primer pacto, 31 y 32. Pero 33 y 34 es lo que Dios está haciendo en mi vida. So, I'm, I'm doing what it says in Jeremiah 33, 31. Chapter 31, verses 33 to 34. That's what I'm doing. That's what God has done to me and with me. And that's why I'm teaching. Like every Christian is supposed to do. Because as Israel, that's what Israel was supposed to do and didn't do it. Now you got a whole bunch of people trying to bring you over back over there to do what? To sit down and still be the same same thing as before? Doing nothing? Not doing what you're supposed to do? What is that about? This is the, the greatest deception of these times that I've seen. Es, es una decepción pretty radical. Es un radical. Pretty good one too, I must admit. Es una excepción muy bien hecho. Muy bien hecho. Y lo que no se cuidan de no de negar su fe. Ese es el problema. You guys are letting your faith be denying your faith. Because all that other stuff is garbage. Roman, it's Greek, Roman, all that. It's all garbage. It's all a diffusion. Es para decepcionarte. Para hacerte negar su fe. And that's what they've been able to do with a great many. Han, pod han hecho que muchos negaran su fe. Negaran la eficacia de ellos. La Biblia habla muy específico. Bien específicamente. 
the Bible speaks in, in very great uh, detail, very specific things that you guys have just walked all over. Porque se dejaron llevar por lo que dijeron. Porque sonaba bien lindo. Because it sounded right. It sounded beautiful. But it made you deny the faith in Jesus Christ. You have to be careful. You don't have to be Roman, Greek, or Roman or para creer en Jesucristo. Tener fe. You don't have to be a Roman, a Greek, anything to have faith in Jesus Christ. Wasn't that real? Or were you faking that? Usted no era real eso, o lo estaba, o usted lo estaba, ¿cómo se dice eso en español? Falsificando. ¿Eres tú un falsificante? Are you a falsifier like that? Because this is what I'm saying, that now you know you have the truth now, that you're doing it, you know, what basis? You, you thought you were right before. Usted pensó que estaba bien antes. Lo, lo de antes era genuino, usted lo decía, usted lo creía. Y ahora es que, usted me va a decir que lo, lo que tiene ahora es genuino. Ustedes están bien, eh, tristemente, engañados. Sencillo. You have been fooled, you're duped. It's very simple. Yo lo veo claramente. I'm not going to pull on you that I'm a psychotherapist or anything like that. I, I'm not going to add hurt to your injury. Yo no voy a añadir más pena a su dolor con decirte que yo soy un psicoterapeuta para entonces hablar de ese, ese ángulo. No, no lo voy a hacer porque les tengo amor y les tengo pena. See, I won't do that because I, I love you and I have pity on you. So I'm not going to do that. But I am going to reprimand you in the name of the Lord. Yo te voy a reprender o ponerte a, ¿cómo se dice? A, a darte una, eh, un, un, un reprensión en el nombre del Señor. Okay? Que usted aguántese. You guys need to hold yourself. Hold. Stop. Shabbat. Stop. <laughs> okay. Take a breather. Renueva su fe. Asegúrase en la fe en el Salvador del mundo. Punto. You gotta know, come back to your faith in the Savior of mankind. No deja que el diablo te roba tu salvación. Don't let the devil take and steal your salvation. This is something you got to do. It really doesn't matter what group you're in or what church you're in. No importa qué grupo tú estés o qué iglesia tú estés en cuenta. Eso yo sé, lo sé yo. ¿Ya no saben? Pero el, el truco de hacerte cambiar la fe en Jesucristo, Jesucristo. Por tanto, tener fe en otra cosa, tienen que tener cuidado. No, es el mismo Jesús. No, 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 no. Si era el mismo Jesús, entonces usted tenía que mantener. El, 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 el momento que tú dejaste, ese es el problema. Yo no sé lo que tú tenías en su mente. Yo solo te aviso de los problemas que puede haber hecho. You know, I don't know what your state of your heart was at the time you did it. But I'm just saying you have to be very careful of what you did. So that's why I'm not telling you to leave your Hebrew this and that. I'm telling you to make sure that you go to Christ, Yeshua, whatever you want to call him, and make sure, absolutely sure, that you are tied to him. Make sure, not because of what they teach you in, in the church. Personally, your personal relationship, you need to make sure. And if you don't know how that can be or how to do that, you need to go back. You need to ask God for forgiveness, forgive you. Because you know what? It's God's, it's God's problem. It really is. But at this at this state, if you don't know what you're doing, then you don't know what you're doing. You need to you need to go back where you were, and you need to get very very tight with the Father. I'm going to tell you right now, 
So you need to do that because you still don't know what you're doing and it's very dangerous. Usted, si hizo, hiciste ese paso y dejaste la fe en Jesucristo porque era romano, griego, romano, lo que sea, por la historia que te dieron, la cuenta, sin ADN, sin evidencia, pues entonces usted tiene que tener mucho cuidado. Si hoy mismo tú no sabes, seguro, de parte de Dios, de parte de Rua Chacodé, lo que tú estás haciendo, usted está en problema, usted está en peligro. Y yo no saco a la gente de sus iglesias. Yo solo lo apego a Cristo. Eso es lo que yo hago. You know, I don't take people out of their churches or their beliefs. I just bring them closer to God. Because God is going to do what he wants you to do. Dios te va a hacer lo que él va a querer que tú hagas. Si tú te apegas a él. Ahora, si te queda a distancia y solo hace lo religioso, pues entonces eso es lo que tiene. But if you stay at a distance and you only do the religious thing, then that's all you're going to have. All you're going to have is your religious experience, but not the truth of God. Because I'm telling you the truth here, and you have some resistance. You have some issue with it. See? And, and that's the evidence that you are holding on to religious, what I call religious gobbledygook. It's basically false doctrine. And not adhering to what, actually what the scriptures say, even when you see it with your own two eyes. But you can see it. And, and all through the 80 hours, you could see it. A lot of stuff we showed you. Okay? But you want to deny it. That is religiosity. Eso es lo religioso. Porque usted quiere negar lo que claramente ha visto. Eso no son interpretaciones. Yo he, yo he enseñado lo que dice la Escritura. Lo que dijo Dios en su palabra. Yo no estoy cambiando. El hebreo cambia las cosas. The Hebrews change things. I haven't changed anything here. I'm showing you exactly what it says. The definition of holy has been changed a long time ago. It hasn't been the, 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 the true meaning even since Moses heard it first. So, you know, you look at it. I'm showing it to you. I show you what God is saying, how God is using the word holy, yet you don't want to see it. Why? Because you, you're going by what men taught you. That's the reason. God didn't teach you that. Man taught you that. Dios no te enseñó lo santo. El hombre te enseñó lo que tú tienes en tu cabeza de lo santo. See? And you, you resist what I'm showing you. I'm showing you in the Bible. And you still resist it. That is, that means you're religious. Eso es religioso. Cuando tú resistes la verdad a favor de lo que te enseñaron en su iglesia, tú eres religioso. Tú no eres, no tienes la verdad. Tienes religión. Verdadera, verdaderamente. <laughs> Eso es lo único verdad que tienes. Religión verdaderamente. Pero no tienes la verdad. So you have, the only truth you have is that you are religious truly. That's the truth you have. You're religious truly, but you don't have the truth. And that's what you have to realize because you're resisting the truth in lieu of the religious teaching that you've got. Okay? So that's what you have to remember. Face it. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. All right, so let's get back into uh, the lesson. So it's very clear at this point that God is using these as pictures. Es claro que Dios está usando esta cosa como eh, retratos, escenarios, gráficas. En carne viva. <laughs> Pero Él hizo todo en símbolos. I showed you that before. Genesis, if you look, God's been using symbols since the beginning. It is his style. El estilo de Dios desde un comienzo. Dios ha usado símbolos para enseñar. Para, you know. So, eh, no es un misterio esto. No es esto es sorprendente. Especie la manera que tú ves el lenguaje usado por Dios. La manera que está especificando las cosas. So, you have to understand that. Uh, I think, oh, can you imagine all of this would have been Israel? What happened to Israel would have been avoided. I'm going to do a teaching and show you that. All the things that happened to Israel may have been avoided. But very well have been. Avoided. 
if they had admitted a spiritual understanding to the instructions. Not that they would stop doing the instructions. I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of error in that. The instructions had to be had. It was part of God's teaching plan. God had to make the classroom. Dios tenía que hacer la enseñanza. Dios tenía que preparar el salón, la aula de enseñanza. Así que el ABCD tenía que estar puesto, los modelos. Pero el, hebre, el judío, el israelita, no aprendió lo espiritual. Dios lo sabía. Era muy tierno. You know. It was too early for them. They, 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 It's early, man. It's just too early. God knew that. Everything was going to be set up the way it happened, actually. That's the way it was going to be. You know, but no one can say God didn't do it. God didn't prepare. God didn't advise. God didn't, you know, put everything in place. He did. He was a just God. You know, a just God would put everything in place, even though... The people would not be ready to even understand this you know, for generations down the road, right? But but God would be just by putting the putting the the information there. Now it's not his fault that you guys aren't understanding it, right? But it's there. You can't say, Oh, I God didn't tell us. He did. He just didn't understand what he was saying. But that's the that's the human condition. That's the fault of humanity. Part of the problem. Okay, so parte el, el problema es que Dios puso todo allí. Está claro allí, pero no iba a ser claro para Israel. Dios sabía que no iba a ser claro. Era parte de todo el plan. You know, la gente tiene que entender. Dios sabe lo que está haciendo. Nosotros no, pero Dios sí. You know, God knows what he's doing. We may not, but he certainly does. So don't ever think that things are just simple because they're not. And I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make. They thinking that everything God is doing is very simple, very straightforward. It isn't. It isn't. <laughs> It isn't. Just the mere fact that there's holy... And then there's most holy, it, that's it. That idea that you have, that everything is simple, no, it isn't. Absolutely not. La idea que tiene la gente que lo, de, lo que Dios está diciendo en la Biblia y todo es, fa, es simple, no es simple. Es claro, pero no es simple. Y el, el mero hecho de que hay cosas santísimas, y cosa santa ya te dice que no son sencillas las cosas <coughs> so I think es un error que hace la gente que dice oh, no es sencillo no es sencillo no es sencillo nada en el universo es sencillo there's nothing in the universe that's, that's simple okay it's very complex the universe the word of God is complex Especially when it's dealing with man. Giving man, that's a complexity there. Oh my God. Hay una complejidad ahí que es tremendo. And the proof of it is, just open your eyes. Different churches, the Jews themselves, the Hebrew, the history of Israel itself. It's, it's a complicated thing. Eh, los judíos, los, es prueba de esto, la, la historia de Israel es prueba de esto. Es, es, es bien claro que las cosas no son tan sencillas. Uh, hay complejidad. Uh, but we make it tougher by not, by trying, by not taking the scripture for what it says, at what it says. Nosotros lo hacemos más difícil con no tomar la escritura a lo que dice. Siempre estamos cambiando lo que dice. Y estoy hablando desde Génesis. Lo que Génesis, en cierto, elimina muchas falsas religiones. Génesis capítulo 1. 
Pero, eh, lo que pasa es que no se, no se está entendiendo lo que quiere decir. Y seguro eh, es por estos tiempos que puede, puedo decir eso porque la ciencia está más avanzada. No era así antes. So, you know, I can say that I have the luxury of saying that Genesis 1 is the key to reservoir because science has advanced itself. Because it wasn't advanced in the past. So, yes, even though God said things in a certain way, because the science wasn't there, you could not have possibly understood what God was saying. But now that we have the science, now it's, it's more clear that the way God said it, exactly the way he said it, it's exactly what's happening. And so, or what happened. And that's the key to the rest of the scripture. So these are the issues. I'm not going to discuss that in this teaching. But those are the issues that are involved here. Uh, <clears throat> again, man had to learn. Man had to learn in order for the Bible to become more clear. So el hombre necesitaba aprender más, más ciencia. Para que la Biblia se pusiese más claro. Okay? So it, that's it, that was always that's true, and that I I, I can see that it's very clear. Eso es muy claro. La ciencia está alumbrando más la la palabra de Dios. So science is really illuminating more of the scripture, because religion or the way people used to think about scriptures really limiting the scripture. Really, the scripture. It's not really saying that. That's why you have all these contradictions and, and whatnot that there are you know, people point to and this and that. It's because of the bad or limited understanding of Scripture throughout time. It has increased over time, but still, now the science is really blowing the Scripture open. Some atheists would say, it's blowing it apart, buddy. Come on. <laughs> it's actually blossoming the Scripture. It's blowing apart. It's blossoming it because the the beauty is that the scripture is still what the scripture says is is still standing. Science has not obliterated the scripture. If anything, it, it has caused the understanding of the scripture to uh, to be greater. So that's really what's going on. Uh, nosotros hemos visto que ahora con la ciencia más avanzada. La escritura ha podido, eh, ¿cómo se llama eso? Hmm. Cuando el flor se abre, es, es, es esa palabra. Ha, ha podido eh, abrir la palabra más claro a luz del día. Eso es lo que está sucediendo. All right, so here we got, we got this priest. He's a dwarf. He has a broken hand. He got broken uh, testicles. Uh, este sacerdote es enano, tiene manos rotas, o tiene partido sus su testículos, no trabajan, lo que sea. Sigue siendo sacerdote. He still remains being a priest. He shall eat the bread of his God, both of the most holy and of the holy. Uh, de la cosa, del pan santísimo y también de los santos. Only he shall not go in unto the veil, nor come nigh unto the altar, because he hath a blemish, that he profane not my sanctuaries, for I, the Lord, do sanctify them. You see? So here we go again. <laughs> so. Sanctify, remember, sanctify is the act of, uh, if the act of making these things teachings. See, because it's not separating them. It's making them uh, teachings. And because I'm making them a teaching, uh, he shall not go into the veil, nor come nigh unto the altar, because he has a blemish. And that's not... Part of the teaching. El, esto es lo que el Señor está diciendo aquí. Fíjese lo que Dios, Dios dice aquí. Es, es, let me, let me put it in Spanish. 
solamente que no entrará al velo ni se acercará al altar porque tiene defecto ¿eh? para que no profane haga vacía mi santuario vacío de qué? porque yo el señor los santifico right? santificar es hacerlo enseñanzas pero si él entra con su defecto está siendo vano la enseñanza eso es todo it's, it's very clear that if he goes in he profanes he makes empty the teaching see that's why he's not to go in but is he a priest yes he's a priest You see, but the teaching won't be the teaching if he goes in with this blemish, with this imperfection, because that is not the teaching. It's a simple. Estas son cosas sencilla. See, they didn't understand. Ellos no entendían esto. Pero eso es lo que quiere decir. Esa es la razón, porque yo lo santifico, yo santifico el santuario. Let's look here at the sanctuary, just curious at the, um, at the usage there. This is interesting. Pa, pa, pa. Let's see what this is. Strong's 865.32. Parrocheth. 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 Okay, that means the veil. Parrocheth. Nor. Come nigh until the misbehach. Now we had this word back in, in Exodus. Remember, Mithbeh. Right? Mithbeh. Strong's H, 4196. Mithbeh. 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 Right? Again, something made up, built up. Right? This is the altar. Because he has a blemish. Let's look at the word blemish here. Vamos a mirar la palabra defecto que usamos para decir que tiene un defecto. Mum. Right? As it has. Y se traduce, is used as a blemish, spot. See? ¿sí? Blot, out your sins, blot. And as a variant, used in a different way. So these are the three words used, blemish, spot, or defect, a physical defect, or moral stain. Este es un defecto físico o un, a un mancha moral. All right, so esto es sencillamente lo que estamos diciendo que no puede él enseñar ser parte que el oficiante que Cristo tenía mancha mancha de pecado pues eso son cosas que vienen de pecado imperfección del cuerpo humana viene de pecado y eso entró al hombre por Adán so the sin of man is what's re manifested by the blemishes Oh, no, man. Adam's sin, not the person's sin. Because it's another mistake people make. Que la gente dicen, oh, mira. Uh, and some religions do this too. Some cultures. That if you're born with a, a, a bum leg or uh, a club foot or, or some disfigurement, that you, how can you say that person's sin? And, and I think also they were thinking that, but the blind man. Yeah, he must have sinned. His, his parents must be must have sinned. That was the thinking. Era el pensar de los judíos, de los hebreos, de los israelitas, de que alguien naciera así y tuviese cojo toda su vida, 
que es por un pecado de él o pecado de los padres. Algunos eh, eh, digo evangélicos, gente cristiana en las iglesias de hoy, en diferentes partes del mundo, que ve una persona así, que tenga algún defecto, oh, eso es por pecado. Eso está, oh, y si se enferma, ay Dios libre, que el pastor se enferma, oh, el pastor está en pecado. Es que es ridículo, son la gente, es ridículo. You know, they think that even if the pastor starts sneezing, oh, the pastor's in sin. He had to be committing sin. Or anything happens to the pastor where he has a defect, or he, he must be in sin. This is what people think these days. It's ridiculous in certain cultures. It's just ridiculous, total garbage. This is the way people think. And it, this is also the way uh, Israel took it. They took things, like that, but why is this guy still a, a priest? Though? See, even God is like, you know, they don't even learn from this. This guy is still a priest. He's a dwarf. Oh, that, that's a pretty big sin. You're a dwarf. You, you, are, you are a big sinner. You're, you're tiny as a human being, but you're a giant, a giant in sin. <laughs> eh, son enanos en cuerpo, pero gigantes son de pecado. Pecador, ay, qué gigante de pecado. Tiene que decir, la gente piensa en todo absurdo, absurdo, just absurdities. One of the other. Estos son el pecado de Adán, todo es. Eh. Y aún tu estupidez. <laughs> so it's all Adam's sin, even your great giant stupidity. It's also from Adam's sin. So you guys gotta quit that, really. <laughs> it's the issue you just don't know understanding it's a failure of understanding alright so what are you going to do people don't get it Mick Das Mick Das Mick Das Psalms H4720 Mick Das Mick Das Mick Das ok we're going to look at Mick Das huh Because in English, this is supposed to be a long A, but I don't know. Mikdash, yeah, Mikdash. Now, what does that mean? It means sanctuary means holy place, a hallowed part. So, again, it's the uh, hallowed meaning holy, so it's the teaching place. It's a consecrated thing or place, especially a palace or a sanctuary. Especialmente un palacio, un santuario, uh, un, un capilla, un lugar santo, un lugar donde se oficia. All right, so it's a place of officiation. So he shall not enter, right? He shall not profane the, the holy space. El lugar santo, porque eso es para enseñanza. You see, I do sanctify Kadash. Él está, esto es un sitio para enseñanza. Right. So again, God is saying here that these are for teaching. It's not, it's not separate. It's for teachings. Yes. It's separate for teaching. That's like a de facto uh, reality. Of course. If this is for teaching like this, this is holy. Let me show you one moment. I gotta be careful. I gotta be careful with this. <laughs> Esto es santo. This is holy. See, this is holy. Because I use this. It's not my crystal ball. But I use this for teaching. See, I teach people about God creating the heavens and the earth. And why is it that you can't have evidence of God in there? See, because, you know... I don't see any, the man who made this, or woman, I don't see them in here either. You know, it's just the thing. When you create something, you're not in it. <laughs> But anyway, I, want, I, I use this for teaching, for teaching that particularly, right? And that's all I use it for. I brought this like months ago. You compre I think it was last year even, right? And uh, look, see? I have, I've never changed the battery. This is the same battery it came with. Esta es la misma batería que vino esto. So, todavía tiene la misma batería original. 
¿Y por qué después de un año al least, si no dos años ya, todavía, mira, todavía trabaja normalmente? ¿Por qué? Why is this still in its, in its original state of when I got it? The original batteries it came with. Why? Because I only use it I only use it for teaching and just teaching that. So now I'm trying to turn it off. I can remember how to turn it off. <laughs> so, and that's it. That, that's why I, I turned it off. I probably turned it back on again with that other one. But hey, that's it. I won't touch this again unless I use it for teaching. And that's how that battery stays there. You see that? So this is, again, This is holy because it's a teaching. I use it for teaching. Now, it can be profane in someone else's house. <laughs> Para otra persona, esto es profano porque lo usan para un adorno, porque le gusta y cada noche lo prende. Every night they'll put it on. And guess what? They probably had to have changed the batteries about 10 times by now. But this is holy. The original batteries are still here. They're still there. They still have it. I mean, so this is like, again, you gotta understand that this is what God is doing. He, he, did, uh, he did this with the holy things. Está haciendo, Dios está haciendo eso con sus cosas santas con sus lugares santos with his holy places the uh, McDeas here right and he does it with his priests lo hace con sus sacerdotes sus gente santa with his holy people too right his holy officiants priests and his holy people what he wanted to do with all of Israel lo que quería hacer Dios con todo Israel you know was to take all of Israel and make all of Israel two things. Él quería hacer de Israel dos cosas. Do you remember what they are? <laughs> A kingdom of priests. Un, eh, un reinado de sacerdotes. Right? And an holy nation. Y una nación santa. See? This is the holy nation. Everybody in here is doing the what they're supposed to do. And everything in there is a teaching. And they became a... And they were supposed to be a holy nation. Meaning that all that stuff that they're learning by doing what they're doing, todo lo que aprendieron. Y están aprendiendo con hacer lo que están supuesto hacer. Eso es lo que van a enseñar a los demás. Al, al Eretz, the rest of the world, because all the world is mine, the Lord said, right there. He's telling you. Dios te está diciendo, pero toda la tierra es mía. Estamos supuestos a enseñar lo que aprendieron por hacer lo que están haciendo al mundo. No enseñar el mundo a ser como ellos. Not to teach the world to be what they're doing, to, to do what they're doing. No, 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 no. It's was to teach what they learning, what God is teaching them through his holy things. It's like I say, the priest doesn't teach you to become a priest. He's teaching you how to do things right because he's learning that from his own vestments, from all his own rituals that he has to follow. He's learning what to teach you. See, not to do what he's doing, not to, to live like he's living, but to learn the things he's learning and understanding from what he's doing. So that's what it's about. It's, by, it's, it's about learning what you're supposed to learn. That's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day. Ah, you see that? Because I can see, I couldn't see the letters. I said, why can't I see the letters? Because it's been turned off center. And now we see it clearly. Okay? 
So this is this is it. This is what Israel was supposed to be, not literally. Esto es lo que tenía que ser Israel, no literalmente, sino figurativamente. Estaban supuestos a ser enseñanza para todo el mundo, enseñar lo que aprendieron de hacer la ley, de seguirla. ¿Qué es lo que te enseña? I press the button again. There you go. <laughs> so I'll put it down here. So that's what was supposed to happen. Israel was supposed to learn and to teach the rest of the nations. That's what they were supposed to do. So, and that's that's what all of this is all about. They weren't supposed to stop being a priest. All the nation was going to be a priest with all the defect. Toda la nación iba a ser sacerdote con todos los defectos. That had nothing to do with it. It's just that God is teaching. Okay? So now we're going to go to the next one. Uh, what, what time is it? Uh, oh, well, we'll just do a little, little intro. Because the next one, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, and, and we, oh yeah, this one is the interesting part right here so we're gonna finish with this now this is the part I told you about in the beginning now take a look with this and this what this will finish here it says speak unto Aaron and to his sons that they what read it here that they what that they separate oh my here it comes so there's actually a word separate in the Bible and they're not using the word Kodesh, it's not holy? How can that be? <laughs> ¿Cómo puede ser que aquí dice separado y no dice santo? See, so now does holy mean separate? ¿Qué dice ese? Día a Aarón y a sus hijos y a sus hijos. Eso está mal escrito aquí. Y a sus hijos que se aparten. Se aparten. Right? Entonces, ¿dónde está la palabra santo ahí? Porque santo quiere decir separado. Right? Separarlo. En inglés dice separado. Que se aparten de las cosas santas. So, ¿qué tú esperas ver en hebreo? What do you expect to see in the Hebrew that it says that they separate themselves from the holy things of the children of Israel? What do you expect to see in the Hebrew? If holy means separate, what do you think it that word would be in Hebrew. Give your best guess. You would expect it to be kadosh, because even the meaning of holy, according to Jewish writers, is that it's separate for a special purpose. And and what is God talking about here? It has to be separate for a special purpose. That's what it said. That they separate themselves, right? So, again, what do you expect to see? Kadosh. So, let's look for it. <laughs> so, vamos a verlo. Already some Jewish uh, scholar rabbi said, no, no, that's not it. But we're going to get the Listen, you're going to give me credit after I finish saying what we're going to say. And here we look at the Hebrew, a Ben Nassar. Let's see if that's a, correct. Strong's H, 5144. Nazar. 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 I always go to the Spanish. So in the Spanish, you know, that's the way I try to do the Hebrew. Nazar. Nazar. Now, that's where you get the Nazarite from. The Nazarite. The rites of the Nazarite. So, it's the separateness that they separate themselves. A lot of words for this one word here. Nazar. 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 Ben Nazar Kodesh. 
Now, when we're reading these words, it says dabar means to speak or talk or say, speak. El Ahraon, El Vain, which is his children, and this means Anne, I think, well, as well, Anne too, his children, Na Nazer, right, which is separate, separate, Kodesh, Vain, Yisrael, Lo, Ha, ha, halal is it or halal? Strong's H2490. Halal. Halal. Halal lo. Kodes Shem, which is his name. Right? So again, it's not to profane. This is, means profane. His name, his holy name. So obviously God doesn't want them to do something to profane and he's telling them to nazer, which is to separate, right? To separate. All right, so basically, Although he's not reading this way, and I'm going to look at the the context. Let's look at the context here. Right, so they need to be so here it explains it in verse verse three. Say unto them, Whosoever he be of all your seed among your generations that goeth unto the holy things, which the children of Israel hallow unto the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, that shall shall be cut off from my presence. So basically it's teaching, not only, it's not talking about uh, the uh, just to the priest. He's saying to the priest also about the people. It's for everyone, really, that they should not come unto the holy things unclean. So no deben de acercarse a las cosas santas eh, no siendo del modelo que están supuesto tener. So they're not, they're not modeling the teaching they're supposed to model. So he tells them, do not come unto the holy things. But the priests especially, because they're the number one model in Israel. El sacerdote en particular, porque ellos son el primer eh, modelo en Israel. The language, there, even though a Hebrew would tell you, no, it's talking about the priest. They could say, you know, the, the problem is that all of Israel was supposed to be priests. Exodus 19, read it, inform yourself. Todo Israel estaba supuesto ser sacerdote. So, uh, that the language here, you can say, oh, he's talking only about the priests, the context, and all that, you can say that. But the fact is, this is everybody in Israel. No one is supposed to come to the holy things of God unclean. Ninguna persona está supuesto llegarse a las cosas o tocar las cosas santas de Dios no limpios, porque esa no es la enseñanza. Because that is purely not the teaching, not for the priest, not for the people. No, por el, no para el sacerdote, ni tampoco para la, la gente, porque todos iban a ser sacerdotes. The bottom line is that this is, they were teaching to, to teachers, and this is what they said, the priests are teaching the teachers that would teach the rest of the world. That's what Exodus 19 says, and that's what you have to realize. Okay, él está enseñando que los maestros, los sacerdotes, los profesores están enseñando los maestros de todo el mundo. Porque eso es lo que dice, enseña Éxodo 19. Eso es sencillo. Léelo y edúcate. Eso es todo para hoy. Ya terminamos. Dios le bendiga a todos y Dios le guarde hasta la semana que viene.